guys. Hail and merry meet. Hey everybody, it's Michelle Marie Delaney. I was going to try to do this yesterday. But I kept bringing in the problems. And what this is, is I saw a video by a younger man that was describing perfectly what the other side was. In the interview, the host asked him about the cash records and the fact that there is multiple planets. And he was asked why he didn't see any of the other uh, species there. And Lummi is going to help me answer some of these questions. Because... If anybody knows more recently about being on the other side, it's Lemmy. So, I'll just let her explain. So, the host said to him, Did you see anyone else there that was non-human? Or anyone that looked like from one of the other areas that God works with? He said, No, I did not. Also, he pointed out that the reception area that you come into when you go through the tunnel is very modern. Now, let's make sure you understand one thing. It is updated constantly to be appropriate for people that die in the current time so that those people can feel like, okay, this is like Earth, you know? So, in the 21st century version, because the story of this young man was from the 90s or 80s, and so he didn't have... Um, a lot of the newer stuff like we do today, okay? And so he said when he sat down, his spirit guide actually wanted him to kind of be on to see how it worked behind the scenes because he never, you know, he was just curious. And um, so he said, okay, so he explained to spirit guide, explained to him, those black portals you see there those are the tunnels that you go through. And each one goes to a reception table where your spirit guides will sit. And they work with you and they open up your skull, your skull is your life chart. And everybody has one, right? And so you, your counselor, your spirit guide, and me and Michelle have talked about this too, so this is not new. Yeah, we have talked about this too. As you update the systems for the newer, newer Earth presence, it's so that the people, when they cross in, come in to the reception area, which is orientation is actually what it's called, feel comfortable. The environment is kind of like the movie Judgment City in Defending Your Life. Same kind of basic idea. That is, you come in, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, you come in, you were, um, you and your spirit guide and your counselor go through your life chart together. You discuss your but and before you do that, before you do that, you are brought back to your youth. You are allowed to be a young when you're at your peak of your health, thirties. Okay, so because he watched an old man who was eighty years old who was clutching his chest, which indicated that the man had a heart attack when he died. 
And right in front of his eyes, he saw him go from an 80-year-old man to a 30-year-old. And that's indeed is our first step, is that that is the important part of the whole process, is getting a chance to get the first awareness of being returned to your healthy self. But there's another catch that uh, he didn't go into. We're going to go into it. What's your true soul? Souls technically don't have genders. Or do they? They kind of do. You have a preferred gender that you consider yourself. Michelle is female. I am technically um, a masculine soul. Uh, but I share a body with a female soul. So our situation is a little different. We'll get to our situation in a little bit. Is that a little more complicated than I want to get into? And Michelle agree that's something which only would add more confusion. Yeah. So after you go through the orientation, then you go into the the Hall of Records. This is your Akasha record. This is everything in your life. This is like defending your life, okay? Except they don't have a prosecutor or a defender so much. But rather, it's like being surrounded by all of the events that have ever happened in your life. Key memories, key points. And so you go through this. Where you looked at all the things that happened, but you also got, of course, now you have insight into things that you couldn't know when you were alive. Like, how did something you say a big the other person feel? I mean, did you upset your girlfriend? Did you upset your, boy, upset your, bo your boyfriend when you said you couldn't go out that night? Were they really upset when they said they weren't upset? Things like that. So you get a chance to see everything in your life in glorious detail. We're talking resolution better than 16K, at least. Now, remember, all this technology is constantly being updated for the newer and newer technology, just like it is on Earth, because they don't want the other side to appear out of date. Now, we're talking about the Earth out on the other side right now. We haven't even dealt with the other species or any of that stuff. That will come later. Um, so you go in, you go in and you do your review of your life. What are you doing? What have you done? What, what good things do you want to work on? What things do you want to improve on? You and your uh, spirit guides are talking about this as you go through this. And one of the things that is sometimes offered at that point is, well, would you like to go back again um, and improve on what you need to work on? Or would you want to stay here? Because if you stay here on the other side, you can go through uh, the classroom setting. If you want to go through a classroom, uh, but be book smart. The reason why so many people choose to go to the other side is they want firsthand experience. I guess the closest thing it would be like is if you want to learn how to drive a truck shell truck. Michelle plays American Truck Simulator. It's a game. It's not a real truck to shell truck with a really loud, powerful Cummins diesel engine underneath your butt grinding away and you heard Kenworth K100E. Okay? It's just not. It's just, it's just a game. Or when you feel the the gear shifter slipping underneath your fingers when you pop the clutch. Okay, so you want that first-hand experience. It's a very common thing. Some people choose to go through and go back to Earth. That's why they come here to Earth University. Because Earth is a university. Earth is where you learn things about the other side and life and things like that. It's a tough course. It's a tough life. You come down here, it is not easy. Okay. Depending on the person, they might choose to just go through and take the easy way out. So, 
Now, since you don't have to rush back to Earth, you can see on the other side you want. You might decide, because time is infinite. I mean, time is not the same as here. Time is different. It's different. It's just, um, I mean, a day on Earth to them is like an eternity. These people on the other side are perfect. They're not sick. There's no handicaps. There's no illness. It's great. Everybody loves it. I love it. Michelle loves it. The blind man would love it. The deaf woman would love it. Right? It's 100%. Great. But... Okay, so you've done the orientation, you went to the Hall of Wisdom, or Hall of Your Records to discuss your life. And then there's this huge garden. I mean huge, right outside the library, which we haven't even got to that one yet. The best, most greenest grass you could ever imagine, the most beautiful plants, benches, it's a beautiful, I mean, this the most beautiful park-like setting you could ever imagine. Wild animals, frolicking around. I didn't even talk about the pets, but I'll get to those too. So when you go down, there's, there's also all of your loved ones have been informed of your coming. And when I say loved ones, I don't just mean people. The pets. The pets are there too. All your pets, all your lives are there. And that's... That's quite a trip when you think about it. all the cats, the dogs, the ferrets, the crickets, the gerbils, whatever pets you had, they're there. The only thing that doesn't seem to be there is insects. Now, that last part was addressed by Sylvia Brown, but I can believe why insects are not there. Um, but let's just say, if there were, they're not the stinging, biting kind that make you miserable. No houseflies, no mosquitoes, no chiggers, no, um, nothing like that, okay? So what about the library itself? Because that's the part of the, that the video talked about that the guy did, but he didn't really go into detail because he didn't have all the answers. When he went into the li library, it was a huge... I mean, it was like the equivalent of like a library at Congress size. We we're talking huge. Okay, huge. This is all Earth history now. That's his key. Only Earth history. Nothing else is in that library. And you can go into the study rooms and you are plasma TVs and you can watch as if you were there video, say, of the Civil War. We're not talking about documentaries. We're talking about actual live scenes from the Civil War. You can watch um, Abraham Lincoln doing his Gettysburg, Gettysburg Address. You can see the blood, the guts, the gore, the glory of their example on the screen. That was just amazing. It's detailed, in your face, raw. It's not, you know, edited or abridged, okay? If you were for books, the library has bound volumes of books. You can actually borrow books, bring them to this table, so you can read them on the tables. Just so like you'd expect, right? Any big library would have a reading room. And one of the things that was asked to him is, what about the Akasha Records? We're hearing all the stuff about Earth. What about the others? And that's what I'm going to get to. If you want to learn about other planets, if you want to take the time to sit down and review videos, say from, you know, the Pleiades, um, the Syrians, the Actarians, the Orions, whatever races that work with Mother and Father God, those books are available to you. You just gotta ask the receptionist at the library. 
The librarian will acquire about the books for you and they will be provided for you. They will be transferred from library to library and will be translated into a language that you can understand. So if you speak English, they'll be in English. If you speak Spanish, they'll be in Spanish. If you ask the library nicely, and you don't even have to be too picky, say, can I see the original text in the original languages? I'm curious to see what the original languages look like. They can provide that too. If you rather do it online, they, of course, they've updated now to have an online option. So you could actually go to their online database, which is very much like, in some ways, like Google, but it's not Google. It's because Google's not there. It's there something else. It's just a newer thing, which makes sense, because when the man who told the story, they didn't have that at that time, okay? It was like the early 90s when he had his injury and that from and the in fact on um, the allergic reaction from the anesthesia, how he ended up there. But even so, he went, you can go in, sit down at a terminal, type it up. You have virtual reality virtually. I mean, you can look at things in detail. You can zoom it in big. You can stretch it up far. You know, you can watch more living demonstrations of a product like anti-war or the anti-gravity and things like that. It's really cool. And, and a lot of people don't normally get into that because... Most people know Earth, and a lot of them don't really think about asking those questions. But the information is there for you if you want it. But it goes further than that. You can actually meet uh, people from the other dimension, I mean, from the other places, the other reception areas. You just go ahead. There's a common area available where you can actually meet and greet Anybody you want, you just ask. Anybody who's passed is available for you to meet. So you can learn. They all speak a common language. They all understand each other. So that's a big plus. There's no Tauro Babel uh, situation over there. It's, it's just perfect. You can talk to each other in ways that everybody understands each other. Now, on top of that, Everybody on the other side has a home. Remember what Jesus said to his, to the, the, the man that was on his right side who um, admitted that he was being crucified for reasons that is his own fault versus a man that uh, refused to accept Jesus as the son of man. And he said to that man, he said, you will be with me today, this day in paradise. For in my father's home, there are many mansions. What's a mansion? It's a manor house. What's so, well, how big is this? This other side is unspeakably huge. It is huge. Big, 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 big. I mean... Bigger than Earth itself. Bigger than, I mean, bigger than Jupiter. Okay, it's just huge. And so, everybody also is doing the things that they love. They're not getting paid to do it. The librarian is the librarian because she loves being the librarian. The, the spirit guides are spirit guides because they love being spirit guides. It's their passion. Michelle, on the other side, is a teacher. I am a teacher, too, in a different topic. But even so, we love teaching. And that's what Michelle's channel tries to do on Earth, is do some of the same thing that she does on the other side. At the same time, you have people doing things like, as I said, they're doing their passion. So they're gardeners, they're maintaining the beautiful gardens and the landscaping. Not because they're paid to do it, but because they love doing it. And it's their passion. Over there on the other side, in these areas, you do what you love. Because everything is provided for you. 
You got food. You got health. You got shelter, which is a home of your design. That's right. You decide it. So if you want to live in a small log cabin in the woods, there's woods, and you can have your log cabin. There are even areas that have snow. As Sylvia Brown said, it's warm snow. I have no idea what the hell warm snow is. Maybe it's like foam or something. That's not snow. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it to that. But the point is, is everybody has provided for it. And yes, you, it's like you can in spending your life. You can eat. And you can eat and eat and eat and eat. And there's no worry about getting fat. That's the greatest thing of all. Because are you really eating food or are you eating energy? I don't know. I've had plenty of good meals on the other side, but I never really gave them much stuff. Is that really pasta primavera? Or does that just look like pasta primavera? It tastes good. It's made to my liking, and I have no problem with it. Okay? And the thing is, your pets, as I mentioned, all pets you had in the past will always be there for you. Puffy went through the tunnel. She saw her go. She's there waiting for Michelle, as is every other pet she's ever had in all of her lifetimes. All 34 of them. That's going to be fun. So, now, what happens after it's time? After you decide you've written a new life chart and you want to go back? Well, that's no problem. That's another process of preparation that goes on to send you home back to Earth again. More than likely, you're going to start out as a newborn babe. You've already got already chosen your soul tribe. I never talked about that. Michelle and I never talked about the soul tribe. Your soul tribe are the people that you trust. You're like, you're like your friends. You're like your clique of friends. You guys know each other. You've had many lives together. You encourage uh, many times together. A lot of people you choose, you meet up, and some choose to go with the other side. Some say not this time. Okay, so you write them into your life chart. We couldn't fill out that part of life chart because we didn't know too many people in our soul tribe to ask. So that's part of the life chart we do have to get Mother God to help us fill out. But we got a majority of the paperwork done. Okay, and um. Now, we're going to do something different. And you, anyone can do this. You don't have to reincarnate at all. You can totally just say, screw it, I'm not going back. Okay. But the people, some people just are adrenaline junkies. And they love it. So, yeah, I'm going back. Why not? I like the, I like the challenges. And Michelle does too. But we've decided we're not going to incarnate on Earth after this life is over. Because... We've been here long enough that we have seen it. We've seen the way the world has deteriorated and it's just not worth it. So we would incarnate on another planet. So one question that the man never answered, and I'm going to answer it, was since you want to go to Silver Moon after you die, are you going to go to the Silver Moon reception area right away? After this life? No, you don't. You go through your reception area. You're given the information and stuff that you need to know to go to Silver Moon. And you're already clearly given in your briefing the information about what's going to happen when you probably return. You're going to be going back to Silver Moon's reception area. Which is going to be an up to date for the people of Silver Moon. Now we call it Silver Moon because we don't know the actual name of the place. We know what it looks like. We know it's similar to that Silver Moon in the World of Warcraft. And we know it's a really awesome place. And it's going to be fun. So we'll just call it Silver Moon. Even though technically 
in World of Warcraft is called Quathos. Okay, just leave me alone at that point. I'm not going to go into that World of Warcraft thing because it just confuses everybody. Um, so after we are go through the um, the preparation, then we start. We're made prepare to return as babies in the new place you're going to go to. And you're made really, really small. And then you're placed into the appropriate vessel for you, which maybe is an egg, an ovum. By the way, you've chosen your gender ahead of time. You are going to be a boy or a girl. That's your choice. And in places that don't have genders or sexes, that's even better because you don't have to worry about that. You know, saying, oh, well, I want to be a boy. I want to be a girl. It's like you don't have to choose. There are some people that are neuter or neutral. They don't have sex. They just don't need it in some cultures. It's not part of the reproductive process. Um, so you go through, you, you, you start over, you go through the preparations, you go you know, into your new mother on the other side. You become an embryo, and you grow, and you become mature. You grow just like everyone else does, as a cinderai, okay, in this case. And you obviously will be inversed in cinderai culture, both before and after. The before is to prepare you, because you can always opt out. You can always change your mind up into the last step and say, nah, nah, you know what, I don't want to deal with that. It's just not worth it. Or you can say, I want to, I'm still going to do it. So you go and you become a baby. You'll live a life, in my, our case, on your new, your new planet. And then you complete your life. You go back to that reception area. Your spirit guide, which is usually... Also, your twin flame is usually one that's working with you as your spirit guide. But here's the part that gets funny. With me and Michelle, I was your spirit guide up until May 1st, 2011. When I, it was in our life chart that we would join together with, with Michelle well, this is Michelle's incar incarnation. So Mother God wrote our life chart or with us and she said, well, you know, I want to make a twist. Michelle has to accept you into her body. And if you, if she accepts you, then I will agree to take over as your spirit guides, plural. In other words, now I'm both of your spirit guide. And she's been working with us officially as her spirit guide. Since May 1st, 2011. Which is very interesting because we get direct information straight from Mother God. And there's no, oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, you sure that's true? Are you sure that's right? No, no, we know, we know it's definitely right. You know it's definitely right. It already is true. In addition to that, usually your spirit guide and you don't usually incarnate and the earth at the same time. It's very rare that they ever incarnate at the same time. But they can. That's what me and Lumi were doing in the 19th century. But they, um, that's a rarity. Okay, Usually one stays behind and basically keeps an eye on you from the other side. Okay, So what makes this different is because me and Lemmy have already decided in the next life we're not going to be together like this. Because both of us want separate bodies. Because, I mean, I love Lumi with all my passion and all my heart and everything, but I think it would be nice to experience a new world just as everyone else would normally would experience it. Now, me and Lummy are going to go over there as friends, and Carmen Miranda is going with us. We already talked to Carmen Miranda about this, and she wants to go. She's already made it clear. She said, I never thought about the opportunity before, but I find you so special, Michelle, that 
I want to work with you. I said, fine. So Kevin Moran and I are going. And also Whitney Houston has said that she was interested as well. <coughs> For the same reason, both are performers. And both want to experience something new. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one other thing that was never discussed was, do pets reincarnate? The answer is some choose to. Remember, you're sentient beings. They can theoretically speak for their own selves. They have the conscience. They have the ability to speak, but they don't have... Um, they don't have to do any of this. They can just say, nah, I'll just stay with my other kitty friends up here. Um, but it's up to them. They choose to stay. They choose to stay. They choose to go with us. They go with us. Um, now, the girl that Michelle knows that she's going to be living with is already going to be on Silver Moon when Michelle meets up with her. Are those two going to be an excellent couple? I can't tell you. I don't know. There might be challenges. But life is Michelle and me is going to be a new experience that is going to take so much new experience. It's exciting. We we'll want so much to be there and try it. But let's talk about something that makes YouTube a little creeped out. And I'm not going to get too much into it because it gets YouTube really upset. What if you press quit? Basically, click the quit button on life. Well, that's kind of... It's, Normally, that counts as a dishonorable discharge. And if you choose to quit, and it's not one of the exit paths that you put into your life charts, there's always, always an exit option if it needs to be exercised. Um... But if it's not one of the exit paths, you're considered of doing a dishonorable discharge. Then you have to start over again. You have to repeat the whole life over again. Because you need to show Mother and Father God that you are sincere. And that you're really seriously going to put your nose to the grindstone and put your best foot forward to learn the lessons that you chose to learn. However, sometimes people choose life charts that are way more complicated than they should have been. And Mother and Father God are going to say to them nicely, Hey, um, Susie, do you realize that you're going to be asking for a lot of agony, pain, and suffering? Is you sure you still want to do this? You don't have to. Let's read my, let's update this chart right now. Sometimes, this is where prayers come in. You're on earth. Things have gone to hell in a handbasket. Your life is miserable. Nothing's going right. Every day you do is a struggle. It's misery. You're not getting nothing done. So you go ahead and you send a prayer up to Mother and Father God, to Jesus, for example, or even directly. Mother and Father God can amend your life chart at that point to make it easier. It's absolutely fine if you have to ask for help. Your spirit guide Whoever they are, you always will have one. Even if it's your, even if it's your twin flame that's not gone to Earth with you at the same time, and they had to pick another person to be a spirit guide, that person will do their darnest to be there for you, one thousand percent. You will always have help. You're never alone. That's the most important thing. 
And so, I think that's the reason why so many people think, or forget this, when they're on Earth. Because a lot of the stuff that we do on the other side is temporarily removed from our lives. Only because they want you to learn and grow and inspire and be uh, a chance to learn without too much pre-knowledge. But remember, it's your life. You chose it. There's nothing wrong with it. So I guess the question that sometimes comes up is, what about homosexuality? Is that a sin? No. Homosexuality is not a sin. You have predominantly female spirits that come to earth as a male spirit to learn more about the experience. And remember, this is all a learning classroom. Learning is fundamentally essential. Michelle's also called this the living classroom. This is where you experience new things. Good and bad. It's part of your character. It's part of your growth. So, on the other side, there's a lot of additional amenities that we didn't cover. One, you guys have the forum. The forum is where you can discuss ideas with other people, concepts, inventors will sit there and tinker with gizmos and gadgets that sometimes don't inspire mankind, for example, on the human levels, to take those ideas and those guys that get those inspirations, aha, moments, you know, oh, well, yeah. like, for example, Thomas Edison came up with the incandescent light bulb because he had the aha moment. What if I had taken all the air out of the bulb and put the, the material in that is going to be the filament? Would it work better without the oxygen or would the bulb burn out? Well, so he had the aha moment. Let's try taking the air out and see if the filament lasts longer. It did. Okay? Other scientists had done the same thing. They invented incandescent light bulb. It's not a new thing. Of course, the guy in the UK designed it using platinum wire instead. And then later on in Europe, they tried tungsten. Um, that's completely interesting. However, unfortunately for Thomas Edison, when he went tried to patent the bulb in the UK, he was already beat to it by another inventor that already had filed his patent. But no matter what, okay, the point is sometimes similar ideas are developed at the same time or around the same general period of time. Over there on the other side, they love to tinker and they love to experiment and they do experimentation with horticulture, agriculture, science, technology. Michelle can tell you that she is a, she teaches a lot of history, teaches a lot of weather, teaches a lot of the sciences classes. On the other side, that's why she's the way she is. It's because she knows what she's talking about. When she says, this situation must occur for this situation must occur. It has to be in steps. It's because she has experience with this. Um, musicians who have passed away. Jimi Hendrix. Harry Chapman. Many others. The Beatles. They are there. The ones that have passed on are there. Performing because they love music and they will do concerts and the great, great concert halls on the other side. It's just amazing to think about. It's perfect. There's no bad weather. There's no hate. There's no tears. It's just perfect. Perfect, perfect place to study and learn. On the other side, specific to the different planets, the same is true. Because the Akasha records, 
which is from the true God, is so encompassing. It covers so many thousands of inhabited planets that Mother and Father God work with that you cannot believe how much of a rich tapestry it is. Now, because of the way the other side is, you might be asking a question, and I'm, I am suppose it comes up, but so few will talk about it, is what if you and your spirit guide or twin flame want to have romps in the sheets? Not a problem. You can have all the romps in the sheets you want. Technically, there is no childbirth. There's no child pain. Except for an area, it's a special place for aborted babies. Or those who died in miscarriage. Those youngsters enjoy their childhood on the other side, and then they get a chance to reach their maturity of the 30s. Remember, you don't have to look like an old crotchety fool. You can look like a 30-year-old. You can look older if you choose. There's no one says you can't look like an old wise woman. Michelle on the other side is kind of like Michelle is here. This is Michelle pretty much what she looks like on the other side. Big educated person, kind of chunky because some people kind of like to keep their punchiness a little bit. It's just something that's part of their lives and that's kind of their image. And you can do that. You can be that. That's what makes it so fascinating. Um, I think we have gotten on long enough, but I'm sure Michelle's got questions that she wants to ask. Is there a hell? There is something you could call a hell, if you will. Um, however, let me assure you, it is not a nice place. It is reserved for a very select few. Where you don't have free will, you have given that up. So you go straight from one life to the other. From grave to cradle, you have overseers that give you orders, your marching orders. You're just doing what they tell you to do. This hell is not run directly by God. It is overseen by God and Mother God. But it is not a place that is truly damned. It's just because they don't believe in the other side, they don't get to see the other side. Because the first thing is you have to believe. You have to believe. And if you don't, well... No reason to disappoint you. But me and Michelle know the other side very well. And I'll tell you one thing that is the hardest thing for so many souls, and Michelle has been to the other side herself, is the sheer heartache of when you leave. Because you're leaving a place of such beauty and such perfect, perfect nature. And it makes you yearn so much to go back. But to know that you have committed yourself to a course of study on Earth, you realize deep down, you want to finish that course of study, it's kind of like going home for Christmas vacation. You see your mom and dad. Now, I'm going to with your mom and dad in this case are a nice family. And it's a happy time. Of course... If your Christmas is the pits, for you, that's like going through the left door, as Celia Brown calls it. The left door. Because 
you're you don't have a happy time there. It's just you boomerang from one life to another because your 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 orders marching orders are given by your overseers that push that to you. So can those can those people who have went from grave to cradle later see the other side? Yes, they can. But they have to realize that they still have to finish your time on the other side or on Earth or wherever place you're incarnating on. Learn what you can. And then the opportunity comes to you when you die, you go through the tunnel. And it's the tunnel of light. If you are not so much along that line, you're directed to another tunnel where you're just given your marching orders and you're sent on to your next life. I can't imagine living like that. I can't either. So, I know that this may be depressing for everybody. However, let us keep one thing in mind. Mother God loves you. Father God loves you. I love you. Michelle loves you. And we all want you to see the true beauty of the other side. It's a it's an exciting journey and it's something that we look forward to. But we have to finish our lives on this planet. And I can tell you, I'm like Michelle, um it's just like the song, I'm working my way back to you, babe. We're working our way back home. And when we get home, because we do love adventure, we have chosen to try life on another planet. It's that simple. It's not hard to understand. The problem is, is that sometimes organized religions make it complicated. I don't think it's because they meant to make it complicated in most cases. I think a lot of the holy books written that what they remember from the other side is not quite correct in that so they write the books that they write based on what they observed. The Bible comes to mind. The Bible, Old Testament especially, and the prophets were written by people who truly thought the requirements that they were teaching were the right ones. It didn't help any with the, the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law was created by Father Yahweh to show mankind what he would like them to do, what was expected. He knew the reality was that the majority of mankind could never hold up to that Mosaic Law. And some people have fallen into that despair of, oh, I... I didn't make sure to go to, you know, the synagogue on Saturday and, and pay my alms to the, to, to the temple. I didn't, I didn't slaughter the unblemished lamb. And therefore, I can't say that my Passover was perfect or anything like that. That's okay because Father God loves you. He knows you have to make sacrifices in life and sometimes they're not perfect. You will still see paradise because Mother and Father God's love is divine and true. 
So another way slow me saying is you don't have to worry about getting a dot in all your eyes and crossing all your T's and making sure your J's have the proper little tail on the end. Just do the best you can in this life. And in the end, it all is going to sort out. Exactly. And if for some reason you think that you're not worthy to see the other side, and this is where ghosts come from. Ghosts think that they're not worthy to enter either the left door or to the reception desk. Let's just tell you something. You don't have to stay here. You don't have to stay here. Your needs. I mean, if you're here guarding somebody, watching somebody, you can still guard and watch them from the other side. Their needs will be fulfilled. You do not need to do that. You do not need to put yourself through that. Go home and receive the blessings that are bestowed upon you every day. It's that simple. No one's going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you. Mother God's not going to judge you. Your spirit guides are not going to judge you. It's absolutely fine to go home. Nobody, to my knowledge, or to Lumi's knowledge, has messed up so bad that they can never see the other side. That is the true kingdom of God over there. It's rich. It's expansive. It's beautiful. And don't ever forget that. Well, guys, this is a long one. It was a long one. And I wanted to talk about this so much yesterday. But we never got a chance to because of technical problems. I just want you to do the best you can every day, guys. I know the world is hard. The way things are in the surf right now is really a challenge for everybody. So if you feel that you are not worthy to go home when your time is time, when your time has come, relax. That'll be fine. If you're one of those who have never thought of the other side or don't believe it's real, ask and you shall receive. Jesus said that to you, right? You got questions? Don't answer those questions for you. Just ask. Because 2024 is another year of enlightenment expansion. And me and Lummi are looking forward to seeing much positive change. But there's also going to be much wailing and gnashing of teeth. Especially by the dark ones. We'll get over this. I promise you. We want to thank you very much for watching this. And I'll see you guys tomorrow morning as why. So until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.